Okay, today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Weiss V90 LE Thin Computer. And what I'm gonna be doing with this thing is repurposing it into a retro gaming rig. I'm gonna be putting Windows 98 SE and Windows XP dual installed onto an internal solid state hard drive and connecting a video game controller up over its PCM CIA slot. We're gonna see just what this thing's capable of. Front panel, we got just a standard USB 2.0 port and a couple audio ports and the power button. And when we look at the back, you'll see Couple dedicated uh, PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. Not all thin clients have those. That's handy for, especially if you want to do older DOS games and it doesn't support keyboard and mouse emulation. And a lot of other standard ports on there. And you'll see in the upper right, we got the PCM CIA expansion slot. And immediately under that is an SD card reader. So when we tear this thing apart, you'll see we got just a heat sink inside. There's no fan, it's fanless. And up in the upper left corner there, you'll see there's the 44 pin. That's just a standard 44 pin IDE port where you can plug in a disc on module. And that's what this thing comes with and what I'm gonna be replacing it with the bigger one. And immediately to the right of that there, you'll see an unused USB header where you could add more USB ports if you wanted to. And there's even an unused spot on the board where you could add another 44 pin IDE port if you were inclined to get out your solder gun and try adding a port like that. Um, on the left side here is the SSD that comes pre-installed, the disk on module, the middle one and the right one, those are 16 and 32 gig modules. I'm gonna be going with the 16 gig one because it's the most easily found online and it's the cheapest of the ones. And you'll see there it is snugly plugged into the port. So if you're looking for one of these online, you'll see there's a lot of different variations here. Here's a quick look at some of the specs on the different ones. As I said, you got three different series. You got the V, the VL, and the VLE. Um, if you can find a VLE, that's kind of the best one to get because it, it does actually benchmark 50% faster on both the CPU and on the video card than the, even the VL does. And even better if you can find one with the PCM CIA slot and an SD card reader. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on here. When you first turn it on, you're going to see this big yellow and white Weiss logo. Um, just hit the delete key to get into the BIOS and enter the password Fireport with a capital F. And once you're in, what you're gonna notice here is that this is a full featured BIOS. Unlike most of the thin clients out there that don't have very many configurations at all, um, you can change all kinds of stuff in here. You can change anything from your boot order to enabling and disabling the um, L1 and L2 cache. You can, let's see, let's browse around through some of this other stuff here. You can turn off that yellow and white logo, which I'm gonna do, and you'll get a more traditional computer looking logo when you fire up. Um, you can control even the amount of shared memory that the onboard video has from anywhere from 16 megs to 64 megs. I'm gonna leave it at its max of 64. If you look at the integrated peripheral list, you can enable and disable any of that stuff. You can change your IRQ assignments for different things. Um, now, when I, would, when I set this up with Windows, which I'm going to be showing you here in a little bit, I didn't run into any conflicts with any of that hardware, but if you, for whatever reason, need to change any of that, that's easily done through there. You can even change the CPU multiplier anywhere from 4 to 12. So you can actually underclock this all the way down to 400 megahertz if you'd like. And that could be handy for certain DOS games getting them to run. So after a reboot here, you'll see a more traditional looking boot up. Um, that logo's gone and all your devices will show up here in list form. And as you can see, we are ready to install Windows. And real quick, just to show you, it does draw about 14 watts when it's idle. When I was benchmarking, it never exceeded 20 or 21. I'm gonna be using Hiren's boot disk to go ahead and partition this hard drive. I'm gonna be putting three different partitions on it. Um, basically, a Windows 98, a Windows XP, and a third partition for holding the setup files that are on the Windows 98 CD. Now what I'm gonna be doing here when I'm in the mini Windows XP part of the Hirons boot disk is I'm gonna be copying and pasting all the setup files from the Windows 98 CD over to the partition where I'm storing all those files. That's gonna make installation and setup a lot easier. Not to mention you cannot install Windows 98 directly on here off of a disk because if you're connecting a disk over the USB port, because it's a uh, um, SATA over USB, it's just not gonna work. So upon reboot here, you'll see I rebooted to Hirons and went into DOS, and we simply change our directory from DOS and run the Windows 98 setup file, and there you go. 
Windows 98 setup will take over from there. If all went well, you should find no errors at all on the disk. And away we go. After the Windows 98 setup is completed, then you're gonna to have to go in and install some drivers and some other software. And I'm gonna show you real quick here what all I put on here. Real quick, we're just going to run the DX Diagnostic Tool, DX Diag, and confirm that DirectX 9.0C properly installed. Now that we got Windows 98 completely set up, it's time to install Windows XP. This you can install directly from the disk. We're going to boot it from the external CD drive. and. Basically, all you got to do with this is make sure you pick the correct partition, the one that you created for Windows XP. And when you select that, you just leave the file system in place and send it on its way. You'll also note here that once that gets started, upon the first reboot, you'll see from here on out, you'll see the um, dual boot option. There's the Windows XP and the Windows 98. And every time you reboot, you just pick which one you want it to boot into. Once that's done, and there was a lot less to do there than on 98, I'm going to run some, go back to Windows 98 and run some benchmarks using Passmark 6. And when we're all done there, you can take a quick look at the Passmark scores. This machine really benches right around a mid-level Pentium 3 computer. Um, that's pretty much what this is in line with. The closest computer that I had was an older Dell machine. And when I benchmarked, it was similar to that. And lastly, before we get on to the video game footage, here is my Basics game port adapter. That allows me to plug in my ProPad Blue into my game port, which then plugs into the PCM-CIA adapter slot on the computer. And there it is all up and ready to go. That works great for playing um, DOS and Windows games. Here is the games we're going to be testing. 
along additionally with Unpictured, a few games not here, and some emulator games. These were all in just a random box of games that I had. Some of these I've never played before, but we're going to see how they do on here. Okay, starting out, we're going to look at some 3D platformers, and the first one here is called Zapper. Now, I'd never heard of or played this game before, but fun little game. I installed it just fine on Windows 98, and it played flawlessly. Next one is another game I've never heard of or played before. This one's called Tonic. Um, Tonic would not install at all on Windows 98. In fact, of all the games in my lot, it's the only one that flat out wouldn't install at all. But it installed and ran fine on Windows XP. Okay, next up is Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. I am playing this on an emulator, specifically on Project 64 version 2, and surprisingly this game actually plays really well on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, let's look at some first-person shooters. Now, this particular genre is not one I ever really played growing up, so these games I've never really played. I've heard of all of them, I've seen them, but I am not good at any of these. The first one, so I'm gonna be focusing just on the technical and playability aspects of these. First one is Duke Nukem 3D. This plays on Windows 98's DOS, and even in the higher resolution mode, it plays fine, video's fine, The Audio works, the music works, it seems to play great as best I can tell. Next up is Doom, same thing, plays great. Um, sound works, music works, video seems to play flawlessly, no problems here at all.
an early Windows game. This is Quake 3 Arena. Welcome installed and played perfectly Arena. on Windows 98. Another game I've never played before, but I was actually really impressed with how smoothly this played for the Fresh. graphics that are in this game, or at least graphics that I think look better than the older FPS games. And it Jump seems to play flawless. To reach the armor. Ah, ah. Enter the portal to begin combat. Hunt Crash to win this arena. You have taken the lead. Next up is a game that has a little bit higher um, hardware requirements. This is Soldier of Fortune 2. I installed this on Windows 98 and it installed, but it, the play was very buggy. It would freeze up all the time and it just didn't play well at all. And after reading online, it looked like that's actually a known issue with this particular game. So went ahead and ran it on Windows XP and ran much better. There's definitely areas where there's noticeable slowdown, but overall I would call this one playable. Here's GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. This game is a little more hardware intensive than Super Mario 64 was, and this one is much less playable. Um, while it ran and played somewhat, the music's pretty choppy, the frame rates are really poor. Um, like I said, it loaded, it runs, but I would not rec recommend trying to play this game on this computer.
On to some strategy games. First, I'm going to look at Age of Empires 2. This is a Windows 98 game that I installed on Windows 98, played, and no problems anywhere to speak of. And drag around. Then, right click to move. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then, click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. the village. Home sweet home. Wait! The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village! Just click your soldiers and Right click the red. English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers, and you will have won your first battle. Good job! Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Here's a little more hardware intensive game. This one's called Domination. Game runs pretty well, a little bit of slowdown. Um, some choppy animations, but overall I would call this one playable. so bad for a rookie Oldridge, but next time you won't get away that easily. And next we have another strategy game, this is Total Annihilation. Same thing, um, for the most part plays really well. I didn't really have any slowdown the or any other problems war. in the game, and, and 4, years, on Windows 98, Empire plays just the great. Brink of final victory over the
a couple of strategy games specifically for DOS. The first one here is XCOM UFO Defense. Now, this one's notorious for not wanting to play at the proper speed on newer systems, so I had to run a little app on here called MoSlow. And once I installed that and played around with the settings a little bit and got the right ones figured out, it actually plays pretty close to the speed that it's supposed to play at. And music works, sound works, gameplay, everything works pretty good on this. Greetings, Commander. Welcome to the Virtual Command Environment. I'm the Artificial Intelligence who will be assisting you. Here's kind of an obscure strategy game from Sierra. This one's called Outpost. Um, I couldn't really figure out at all what I was supposed to do in this game, so I just played around a little bit in the intro stages, but it, best I can tell, it plays okay. You may select up to four of these star systems in your search for a habitable planet. Tau Seti. Now you must decide how many people you wish to save from death and what supplies will be required to support them. Any mistake at this point will doom you and your colonists to certain death. Have a nice day. The VLBI probe data have arrived. The fueling process is complete. You now have the option to commit your starship and your colonists to an interstellar journey. Orbital insertion complete. Stable orbit attained. Sensors activated for planetary scan. You now have the opportunity to launch any satellites or probes you may have packed for the voyage. The launch of the seed factory will end the sequence. Any mistake at this point will do you and your colonists to certain death. I just have to look at a golf sim. I love a lot of the old golf sims from the older generations of PCs. This one here is called PGA Tour 486. Um, 
It's a DOS game, installed on Windows 98 DOS, and it runs properly. He's left with this for par to remain at three over. Next is a shooter called Tyrion. This is a DOS game. The only thing that doesn't work on this is the sound effects. I could not get it to detect the Windows 98 Sound Blaster emulation, but the music seems to work fine on it. Very little noticeable slowdown in some spots. Overall it plays well. I did try it in DOSBox, and when I did that, I was able to get the music working, but I could never get this thing running at the correct speed. It was always either too fast or it was choppy or the music didn't want to play right. So this is just played in Windows 98 DOS with just music and it's quite playable. Next up is an old Windows 95 game that I installed on Windows 98. This one's called Silent Thunder. I couldn't figure out what to do in this one, so that's about all I have to say about it, other than it did seem to play fine. And here we have Need for Speed. I believe this is Need for Speed 2. Um, I installed this on Windows 98. Seems to run fine. The only it, this is a game I've never played before. The only thing I noticed a little bit is that the some of the dirt and smoke thrown up from the tires from the passing cars or from the cars ahead of you rather. It's very opaque. It's not very transparent. I always feel like I'm driving through walls. Now, I don't know if that's just the way the game's supposed to be or if it's not displaying properly in my, on my graphics card, but other than that, the game seemed to run pretty well. Some slowdown here and there, but frame rates overall were pretty good.
And here's one of my favorite racing games. This one's called Roll Cage. This one's a pretty overlooked game that I never really see talked about. It runs really, surprisingly, really fast. Everything moves quickly in this game. And similar to like the Mario Kart games, you get a couple of power-ups that you can pick up along the street and you can use them to take out your opponents. Um, yeah, I love the graphics in this. I love the playability. This is just one of my favorite ones. in a windy city. Get ready to head downtown for a showdown. This is Midtown Madness. This is Midtown Madness 1, the original one. It installed on Windows 98, but it ran painfully slow. In fact, the software rendering was actually faster than the hardware rendering, so for whatever reason, it did not cooperate with Windows 98 and the hardware acceleration. But when I installed it on Windows XP, it seems to run pretty good. I've got this running at pretty much medium settings across the board. Um, maxed out settings it slows it down quite a bit but if you run just medium distance and like I got shadows and reflections and stuff all turned on it actually runs pretty well some 2D platformers. This first one's called Hocus Pocus. This is a DOS game. Music, sound, everything runs great on it. I didn't have any issues with this one. Definitely a good one to play on here.
The DOS game I had a little less luck with was Alien Carnage. This one has plays with really choppy audio on here. I'm not quite sure what what's wrong with it or why it doesn't want to play. The actual gameplay is okay, but I can't take the audio. It's just it super choppy. is Commander Keen 4. This game, this just does not play in Windows 98's DOS mode at all. The back and forth video is, movement is really choppy and for some reason I'm getting a like a double split screen. On the top you get the movement and then the bottom you get like a duplicate of what's on the top and a lot of flickering and it just, this is not playable at all. But when I ran it in DOSBox, the uh, game actually plays okay. A little bit of screen tearing and a little bit of uh, jerky video motion, but overall, I would rate this one as playable. that I have I've never played this one before this one's called Realms of Chaos this is a DOS game and this actually is a neat game I like this one this is one I may play a little more of after I'm done shooting this video um, it did not play well in Windows 98 DOS mode you'll see that the uh, the back and forth 
video is really choppy. I'm not quite sure why. What the problem is, it's similar to the problem that I had with uh, Commander Keen 4, where you get just kind of this back and forth, almost making motion sick type movement. Like right here, you can see it when he's going up and down this, uh, this platform. And it's otherwise playable, but because of that, I would, I would uh, recommend playing this in DOSBox. Now, when I played it in DOSBox, the loading times were slower, but once you got onto the gameplay screen, the game played much smoother and was actually very playable. Next we have a little bit newer DOS game. I think this was released like in 2001. This one's called Happy Land Adventure. Everything runs fine on here except I couldn't get the music working. It did not want to detect the MIDI audio for whatever reason. The sound effects work fine. Neat little game. Plays pretty good. And what would be 2D platformers without looking at a few old school console games. First one here is Sonic 2 on the Sega Genesis. Um, as you can see from the frame rate at the bottom there on the emulator, which I'm using, um, and I'm trying to remember, it's been a little while since I captured this footage. I think I ran this on Fusion. And you'll see it maintains a solid 60 frame rate throughout. Game plays perfectly.
also tried a little bit of NES emulation. Here's Super Mario 2 and Super Mario 3. Played on... You know, I gotta be honest, I don't even remember what emulator I played this on. I... It wasn't JNES and it wasn't FCEU. I can't even remember what it was, but it, it, both the games play pretty good. Slight lag between the audio and the jumping, and very slight input lag, but I think that's more a result of the emulation than the controller itself, because I, this is the first time I ever noticed any lag on anything. Otherwise, pretty playable. Lag's not too bad. quick SNES titles I checked out. The first one was Super Contra. Actually, not Super Contra. This one's called Contra 3 on the Super Nintendo. It runs and plays just fine. tried playing Super Metroid, just like Contra 3, it ran perfectly fine with no problems at all.
couple of sim games I tried. The first one here is Sim Roller Coaster. This is a game I've never played before. I've always heard about it and seen it, but I've never actually played it. So I just was playing around a little bit here in the intro. It installed fine on Windows 98 and seems to play properly. The other sim game is one that I played a lot in my childhood. This one is SimCity 3000. And probably, in my opinion, the best of all the SimCity games. It ran okay on Windows 98, but it was kind of slow. So I tried installing it on Windows XP and it actually ran much smoother. Um, on XP, played as fast as I can remember it from when I had it a long time ago. Ultra! A couple of pinball games I checked out. The first one is 3D Ultra Pinball. I installed this on Windows 98 and seems to run and play just fine. This is actually a neat little pinball game. I like this one. I'm hungry. Let's go to the snack bar. The stopwatches will cut down on the wait time.
This pinball game, however, this one sucks. I just, I don't care for this game at all. This is eGames Pinball, and it runs and plays fine, but this one's just a boring one. I don't, I do not care for this one. But it runs fine. Bull one. Bull C. Another game that I had that's not really any good that I don't like, I don't think this is uh, a good remake at all of any of the retro arcade games, and I like a lot of the classics, but this, this is just not good in my opinion, but it, just like the others, it runs and plays fine, and this was also on Windows 98. Lastly here, I've also got a, another arcade remake that I tried. This is a Frogger. This is actually a pretty good remake. Uh, same thing, installed it on Windows 98, and the game seems to play pretty well. Oh, <laughs> 